Now here's a serious question. What kind of campaign has it been for the party leaders themselves? They, of course, have been in the forefront of the battle. They've taken all the pain and all the kicks. A few of the happens. Here's Mike Yarwood. Well, I can honestly say this has been one of my most successful campaigns. Wherever I went, wild cheering fans have showered me with flowers. In fact, it's been a bit like a Dorothy Squires concert tour. And consequently, I feel quite sure you will see me voted in as your next government. In fact, I feel so confident that I've just sent Mary out to buy six bottles of Celebration Champagne on sale or return. <laughs> it has also been said that this campaign has developed into a sordid slanging match between the two main party leaders. Rubbish. This is just a vicious rumour spread by that pomp Popeye with the performing shoulders. He has also smugly said that the Liberals carry no weight. He wouldn't sound so cocky if Cyril Smith sat on him. <laughs> and I wish he would. During this campaign, I have spoken to housewives at great length. In fact, most of them haven't been able to get a word in edgeways. But I sympathise with them because under the Tories, food has risen 53%, which means 15 pence on a pint of beer, which in turn has led to many bank managers saying to many heavy drinking customers, there's a terrific overdraft in here. I was in the supermarket only yesterday and I saw this old lady counting pittance to see if she could afford the tin she held in her hand. But she couldn't, so she put it back on the shelf. Which was a blessing in disguise, really, because uh, it was the last one in the shop and I wanted it. <laughs> Rather for the pilches. Of course, I shall be making a few changes. For instance, I shall be coming down very heavily on the property speculators. At least I will as soon as I've had time to sell my three houses and move into Centre Point. <laughs> I shall also nationalise the oil in the North Sea. I shall slap, I shall slap, no, I shan't slap, I shall slap such a high... <laughs> I'm very tired. I shall, I shall slap such a high import duty on it that the oil slicks will be afraid to come ashore. <laughs> and finally, though I'm not willing to make predictions, let me just read a couple of lines Mary has written with regard to this contest. I am the greatest, I'll be your FPM. I promise I'll get Ted out of number 10. Finally, before I go, no, don't go yet. <laughs> Let me say in the words of Hugh Green that during the BBC's excellent coverage of the election results, Robert Mackenzie's swingometer is only for fun. It's your votes that really count, folks. I think I will. <laughs> well, Mike Yarwood with some thoughts about Mr. Wilson during the campaign. Just a, a moment in some of the agony, and it's real agony, of course. Of but in accordance with BBC's propriety, Mr. Heath. Ahoy there, my shipmates. As you probably know, I am still your Prime Minister. So there. And I'm very confident that tonight I shall be re-elected, so much so that you won't find a furniture van outside number 10. I've asked the driver to keep driving round the block for a few hours. During our campaign, I've thoroughly enjoyed my casual walk-arounds, though I'll admit, in one or two areas, I did have to quicken my pace a little. <laughs> During this tour, my statisticians tell me that I was asked 14,876 different questions. They also tell me that I only slipped up twice and gave uh, inadvertently direct answers. <laughs> but the response was terrific. In fact, everybody in Leeds said they would vote for me, all except one, but then, of course, Jesse Yates has always been jealous of my organ playing. <laughs> in South Wales, in order that I might see conditions for myself, a group of miners tried to persuade me down a deep mine shaft, but luckily I managed to step aside just in time. <laughs> but let's face it, the miners aren't the only ones who spend most of their lives in the dark. Half the time, I don't know what's going on either. And I think I've been very sporting towards Harold in this campaign. I even sent Enoch Powell, Enoch Powell round telling everybody to vote Labour. And he must have been convincing because he, he's even had Anthony Barber in two minds. <laughs> but then, of course, Anthony Barber is always in two minds. <laughs> but how has the campaign gone? Well, there's talk of liberal success. But, of course, Jeremy Thorpe can't possibly become Prime Minister. It would ruin Mike Yarwood's act. He can't do him, you know. Come to think of it, he doesn't do me pretty well either. During this campaign, Harold has tried to make an election issue of the common market. 
but it's not the terms that really annoy him. What really gets up his nose is, I refuse to make the Silly Isles one of the six. <laughs> he also complains about restrictions of phase, on, of phase three, but it's a well-known fact that he was only too pleased to settle within its limits when Mrs. Wilson asked for a housekeeping rise. I admit the cost of living has risen. I have no control over world prices, and I've even less control over ours. <laughs> Harold says he'll reduce prices by increasing taxes, which I'm all for. I mean, you could never get one in the rush hour outside number 10. <laughs> Have you ever found that, Alistair? It's absolutely murder trying to get a taxi. Really, uh, you can't get a taxi. Terrible. Hello, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike.